It is within this environment that Wooney Bittress and his team are providing young deaf kids an opportunity to be equipped with relevant tech skills. <laughs> Founded in 2017, the Deaf Technology Foundation is located in the northern region of Jos, Plateau State. And children with hearing impairments from the ages of 5 to 19 years are given a chance to be trained in programming and robotics. The children come to the center ready to hone and show off their skills. One of the numerous projects they've created is this smart home. Yeah, we, we try to make an automated house so that we'll show the world what the deaf can do. Yeah, so we automated the gate as well so that you don't have to get off the gate to get off your car and open the gate. We used ultrasonic sensor with Arduino board. When any object come close to the, the house, yeah, yeah. That, that gas um, sensor, if your gas cylinder has problem, and this will, the alert will come off and people will see the light and know. Yeah. So yeah, um, and because the gate doesn't only allow the person's device that is paired to the gate, any other means the, the thieves try to access the house, the intrusion detector will just detect and sound and yeah. So at the technical center, training is free and it's aimed at driving diversity and inclusion by building an ecosystem of young deaf software engineers and STEM experts that will give back to their community. When I was having at Zamfara, I met a young, a young girl and she was struggling with suicidal tendencies and loneliness and depression. And I was like, communication would have really, really solved all this because um, she's just alone at home. Nobody communicates with her. So um, I saw that there is something that could be done and I should just take it upon myself to learn the sign language. And after I did, I now discovered that what other skills can I give her before I eventually leave, which is um, the one I have handy, which is computing skills. So um, we started, we just, I had two laps off, I gave her the one, so she started learning how to program because where will they learn? There's virtually nowhere for them to learn. So when when her friends heard that there's somebody who knows sign language now and has this skill, everybody, computer is glorious, everybody knows it, so, and they want to be part of it. So that was how they started coming in, in droves. And so we saw the need and decided that really they should be part of uh, this, um, the tech ecosystem. Some deaf children often suffer discrimination in school and are unable to study their courses of choice, especially those that are science related. Either due to lack of hearing aids, few inclusive schools, or just because they're deaf or hard of hearing. Wuni is hoping to change the narrative that science is not for the hearing impaired, and he says it all began in Zamfara State. The only course they are allowed to study in Nigerian universities is special education. And it's unfair. And when we are talking, we have, it's, it's an untapped potential, talent pool. And so, so for us, it's, it's like, let's explore this talent and see what they can bring to the table. The trainings trigger and stimulate the creativity of the kids. It equips them with problem-solving skills, critical thinking, and teamwork. When, when, when the work became so much on me in Zafar, I had to quickly run to Just. Just is like the center of, well, 
unofficial center of persons with disabilities. Like this is their headquarters, unofficial. So I saw that if I want to really provide a solutions for this ones, I couldn't do it alone. Well, I can empathize with them, but I don't really know how they feel. So the best thing is just to get somebody from the community so that we could start, we could establish this, start together, and see how it grows properly. So that was how I came to just I met one of my dear friends. So we started the organization together. Even though funding was a key challenge for Wuni and his team as they bootstrapped this initiative, above it was the societal discrimination they had to battle with. The society's attitudes towards towards the children, it's really, really alarming. For example, you you see a deaf person operating phone and you'll be like, oh, can he operate phone? Yes, he has a brain, you understand. So those are it, it took it took a long walk with the parents because eventually we had an association for them. The parents they come together and we kept keep enlightening them of the problems of these children and gradually they began to change their perception and begin to see that truly these children can do anything. Secondly, um, funding has been a big challenge. It's we try to shy away from that. We we never write any application. Um, yeah, fundraising. We never did any fundraising. It was just from our pocket because. Um, DTF not also wants to increase the representation of the deaf community in STEM fields. It also wants to get involved in making inclusive decisions that will create access for them.